a bus turned up from a firm called Cantors. And it had infinitely many passengers on it. But this time, it had one passenger for every real number between 0 and 0 0.5. You can do between 0 and 1, though, for the purposes of what I'm saying here, you should avoid the number 1. But between 0 and 1 point, 0 0.5 will do. There's enough real numbers there to cause trouble. So every one of them's got a shirt labelled with their decimal expansion, an infinite decimal expansion. So indeed, for example, one of them might be the number a third, which will have the expansion 0.3333, or somebody else might be 0.3434, or all sorts of other real numbers with various expansions. If it's something like a fifth, they get labelled the expansion 0 0.2000 recurring, because I'm going to have everybody have an infinite expansion. So when there's a choice, we'll, ex we'll end expansion with recurring zeros rather than recurring nines, because that's just the way that holiday tour company operates. They've had a good think about how to try and fit all these guests in, but there's just too many. He said, sorry, can't be done. You'll have to try the Hotel Uncountable around the corner. We can't fit you all in here. Now let's see if Dave was right. OK, so this last bit is a bit tricky. And uh, in fact, I explained it in my third year module this year uh, to third year undergraduates. Though some of the first year undergraduates here learn it as well. So, so people get two goes at learning and understanding this proof. That means that you might not understand it right now. But nevertheless, let me try and indicate why it might be impossible to fit all these people in. Now, this is done with a proof by contradiction. You assume that it is possible to fit them all in. Then you construct a real number based on the method you put them all. So assuming you've managed to get them all in, you show there's a real number that you can construct that gives you a contradiction, a real number which corresponds to someone who you couldn't have fitted in. So let's see how that works out. So suppose for contradiction, so I'm going to deduce something ridiculous from this, that Dave has managed to find a way to fit them all in. And now I'm going to define a sequence. And from this sequence bn, I'm going to define a real number which will give me a contradiction, which will show that this couldn't have been done after all. So I'm going to define a, a sequence of numbers bn, which are either 3 or 4, which will be defined in terms of how you fitted the guest in. If room n doesn't have a guest from Cantor's in, we'll set bn to be 3. Otherwise, it does have one of the guests in from Cantor's. And now I have to decide whether bn is going to be 3 or 4 in this case. And I'll base it on who that guest is. The guest that's in that room has got a decimal expansion, 0.A1, A2, A3, and so on. And I just make sure that bn is either 3 or 4 and that it isn't equal to an. Specifically, I'll make it 3 if an isn't 3, and it's 4 if an is 3. So the main point is that whatever it is, it's not the same as the nth decimal place belonging to the Cantor's guest in room N, if there's a Cantor's guest there. So we put that in a box. If there's a guest with Cantor's in room N, then their decimal expansion doesn't have BN in the nth place. So we now continue with Cantor's diagonalization argument. Whenever a guest from Cantor's is in room N, as I just said, the decimal expansion doesn't have bn in the nth place. But we've got a sequence of threes and fours, which I've defined as above, and we can use it to make a new real number, which we call x, 0.b1b2b3. It's made up of threes and fours, so it's definitely between 0 and 0 0.5. It's a real number between 0 and 0 0.5, so that means it's the same as one of the numbers belonging to one of the Cantor's guests. And it doesn't end in recurring nines or recurring zeros, so it's even the same expansion that one of the Cantor's guests has. We'll call them guest X, since 
they've got an expansion corresponding to that number x. Guest x is labeled the expansion 0.b1, b2, b3. But they must be in one of the rooms. I assume that. Say they're in room n. And now, this Cantor's guest, room, guest x, is in room n. And he's got a decimal expansion with bn in the nth place, which contradicts the blue box at the top. Because if the guest from Cantor's in room n, then their decimal expansion doesn't have a bn in the nth place. That's a contradiction. I've deduced something ridiculous by logical steps from my original assumption. That means my original assumption must have been wrong. The original assumption was that there was a way to fit them all in. So the conclusion is that there isn't a way to fit them all in. Even if the hotel starts off empty, you can't fit all the guests from Cantor's in. But the Hotel Uncountable's got a room for every real number, so that's all. they just go off there, no problem. But then, one day, even the Hotel Uncountable couldn't cope. But that's enough for today. <laughs>